In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about quantitative easing. It's kind of like money for nothing and chicks for free, and I'll explain that later. Borrowing is not happening. The bankers, the creditors, these people in the gray, typically loan money to people and to businesses. People and businesses of all shapes and colors. So right now, loans are not happening. So businesses and other people can't get money to finance homes or finance businesses. So we see the economy start doing this and starting about 2007, it's going downhill. So one mechanism, the way that the Fed or the government tries to fight this is by lowering the Fed funds rate. And this is the Fed funds rate since 1960 to present. And at the present time, it's at a historical low. So if I zoom in on that little orange circle, from about October 2008 to January 2011 now, the Fed fund rate has been in about 0.2%. Now another important interest rate, the prime rate, is also at a historical low. Again, this is the prime rate from 1960 to present. And the prime rate is the lowest it's been in 50 years, and it's currently at 3.25%. Again, the lowest rate in 50 years. All these low interest rates are not positively impacting the economy, so Bernanke continues to see the economy do this, go down. So he thinks he's got a solution. What the government needs to do is inject large amounts of money into the economy, kind of like taking heroin or a drug. By the way, this is the same policy being followed by the United Kingdom and already their inflation rate has jumped up to 4%. So the reason for the injection that Bernanke's thinking that ain't working, we need some money for nothing and our chicks for free. Reminds me of a Dire Straits song from the 70s. Now I'm gonna discuss mechanically how this actually works, one way it works. Banks hold mortgages and families live in these houses with a mortgage. The problem is they went toxic. A lot of mortgages went toxic and banks took over homes. The problem with these toxic mortgages, the banks don't have money. But the government has money, right? So then all of a sudden the government decides to trade these toxic mortgages for cash or for money. So the government took over these bad mortgages. Now the first question has to be this. What is the government planning to do with all these mortgages or toxic assets? We don't know. Maybe burn them. I don't know. The second question is, where did the government get the money? They printed the money. That's basically what they did. The government's already hugely in debt, so that's how they got the money. They printed it. Now banks have cash to loan. They got money for nothing. And these families can buy houses again. Now the problem is, this whole thing is probably going to repeat once again. Right? When bankers and creditors start loaning people money again, hopefully the economy will get back on track. At least that's what the theory is. One thing we know for sure, this whole policy is going to increase debt, right? And there's going to be some new bubble. This will cause another bubble, another debt bubble of some sort. It has to. Another theory dating back to David Hume and going all the way to Milton Friedman, so about 200 years of economics, suggests we will have inflation. I should probably add Hayek in here as well. He's probably thinking, what are you guys doing? So that's been a little bit of quantitative easing explained. I guess I took about four minutes of your life. So party more, study less.